What's going on, everybody? I'm going to try out this uh, little narration deal here for in and out throughout this video. I know it's kind of long, so if you don't feel like watching the whole thing, no hard feelings. But I know when I watch people do, especially cutting videos, I definitely find it a lot more interesting when there's some narration. So I'm going to give this a shot, and we'll see how it turns out. I'm working on a job here up in New Jersey, and I... Uh, I'm out of Baltimore, Maryland, so this job's actually almost, it's over two hours away from where I live, one way. So it's a long drive, but uh, it's, it's worth it for me. They're compensating me pretty well to be up there. And I'm cutting behind a mechanical crew that is running a uh, Timco Feller Buncher, and they got a pretty nice setup. They got a uh, Pretty big cat skitter, cat 535, uh, Prentice 280 on the landing, and they also had an excavator there that you'll see here in a little bit helping out. So cutting a bunch of ash trees for them, um, nothing real big. I would guess like 30 inches maximum size. I'm cutting with uh, 661 with a 28 inch bar. So just for reference, what you're seeing me doing as far as the size of the trees, they're not real huge. Um, I was kind of surprised, actually, that they hadn't come cut, because uh, it seemed like to me they could have done pretty much all these trees with the with the mechanical with, with, the, with the machine with their feller puncher, but they uh, had me come up there and cut for them. So that's what the beginning of this video is right here. I'm just dropping one of these ash trees, and they're actually pretty nice. You can I don't know if you can tell or not from from that shot, but that ash there was a you know, a live, I mean, obviously it's winter time, so it doesn't have leaves on it, but it's a live ash tree. Most of the trees that we cut on this job that were ash were uh, live and healthy, which is not something that you see around where I am in Maryland. All the ash trees, I mean, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know that I've ever seen one uh, that was of any significant size that was in any kind of, you know, good health. So uh, anyway, right here, this is one we're doing right next to the road. There's power lines right behind the excavator, right off to the side of him, actually. And this is just a little ash tree we're going to flop over. Nothing, nothing too exciting here. Um, so, I mean, I guess anytime you cut next to power lines, that's always fun. But, you know, when you got a hoe, it was a big, you know, 80,000 pound, 350 size machine pushing on it. So, no worries there. That, uh, that hydraulic wedge is going to send that thing right over. And here I fall into a mud puddle. This is kind of funny. I just slip right off this little bank there and fall down into that puddle. And I didn't even realize it was that deep. I mean, I guess they dug a stump out of there or something. Um, you can see I went up over my knee in the water. And it was like, it was cold too. I mean, it was 20 degrees, 25 degrees. So that sucks. Uh, falling in the water. That's no fun. So I'm just cutting another ash here. Uh, I do a lot of board cutting, as you'll see. Um, tend to, you know, make my face, my face cut, make my notch, and then bore in behind that on each side and meet up at the back of the tree. That's when I'm cutting. I'll do that when I'm cutting by myself. When I'm cutting with machine pushing, uh, it varies, you know, the style that I cut with. Um, and you know, some of these trees were small enough that I was just back cutting them. This one looks like I'm gonna bore in on. So yeah, so. The reason I do that for anybody who, you know, might not be familiar with that kind of technique, uh, it's considered a safe, one of the safer ways to cut, um, due to your lessening your risk of uh, barber chair or, you know, you have control over when the tree leaves the stump. Like if you're just doing a straight up back cut from the back of the tree up to your hinge. You don't really have control over when the tree's going to fall. It just kind of starts to go when gravity takes it. And doing things this way gives you the opportunity to set everything up so, you know, I can get my hinge set. And now you'll see I'll leave some holding there on the back of this tree. Uh, so I'll come in on the other side now and I'll set my hinge on that side too and get that to the thickness that I want it. And then I'll... Um, just follow, you know, that cut out the back, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. I'm throwing all this stuff out of the way. Because it's always good to have your work area cleaned up and neat and tidy so you can run away if the tree tries to fall over on you. You can run away and not trip over stuff. So, 
as you can see there, I'm born inside a tree. And I'm going to come up again, set my hands, and get you know, the thickness that I want. It looks like I've got that. And ideally, your cuts will meet up. Like the cut that I made on the other side, I would meet up with that. But that doesn't always happen. It doesn't have to either. Uh, and, then, and then you can see right here, I'm just going to keep going around. And I'm going to meet up with my first cut that, uh, that I started with. This tree might sit back on me. I'm not sure if it does or not. Yeah, it looks like it might sit. It's going to make me work for it. Going to make me bang a wedge in the back of there. I'll go ahead and see. Looks like I'm going to check and see if I got everything. But I think I did. It's not real big, so I wouldn't expect to. Yeah, I can't even get back in there because it sat back on me. It was real windy this day. I actually, I actually knocked off early because uh, the wind was blowing so bad. I went up there planning to work a full day and ended up quitting around 1.30. Uh, just because the wind started blowing... Pretty, I mean, it wasn't like gale force, but, you know, 20, 30 mile an hour winds, um, and, you know, not in the same direction. I mean, if the wind's going to blow one way, you know, all the time, then you can work with that and kind of use it, you know, to your advantage, or at least count on it, but it wasn't doing that. It was, it was all over the place, so it was kind of screwing with me and making things difficult. You know, I was having a lot of trees that were sitting back and just... You know, not the uh, not the way that I wanted it to be. Okay, sorry, I got a little off track there. Uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so I had to wedge that one over, and now you see me walking out here in this swamp to cut it in half, and that wasn't too exciting, so I just cut it off there. Here we are again, got more trees in the swamp. This place was. A, well, you saw the video of me falling in the stump hole. Just a muddy mess there. Like six inches of mud everywhere, or worse. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of frustrating in that aspect, trying to drop trees in a place that, you know, they didn't get all mudded up, and there just wasn't really any way to do it. So, I just kind of stopped trying after a while. Um, but I was at least trying to put them somewhere that I could leave, you know, go on top of them without stand an ankle deep in the water, uh, and that turned out to not be very easy. So it's just a little ash I'm going to put down. Pretty much, like I said, everything on this job I was cutting was ash. And we'll just let her fly out there in the middle of the pond. There's the owner standing right, you can kind of get a glimpse of him. He was, came out and was watching me cut a few, and I think this one, is something stupid here? Yeah, I think I screwed this one up. I've been cutting all morning, mostly by myself, and for a little while with the operator on the hoe, pushing trees. So, then the guy who I was working for, um, he, for what, oh, he wanted to pick a few trees for me to cut, because they had a special load that they were trying to get out of these ash trees. <coughs> Excuse me. So, he's coming out, you know, hand-picking, like, I want you to cut this one, this one, and this one. And, of course, I do this stupidity, drop that thing right into the other one standing right in front of it. I don't know how I did this. You know, I guess just one of those things where, I mean, the channel's called Amateur Walker for a reason, so that was an amateur move there. And, plus, I got my saw pinched on the way down, so I had to leave that on the stump. Fortunately, it didn't get smashed. So, the skitter man, he'll, he comes over and pulls it out, but then some excitement ensues with that as well. So, that was just kind of a, I don't know, not my... Not really what you want to happen when you're working for somebody and they're standing there watching you and you just do something dumb like that, drop a tree into another tree. But I wasn't really paying attention to how tall that one, the one I was cutting, didn't pay enough attention to how tall it was. And uh, just, you know, got it hung right up in that other, that other ash right in front of it, which was supposed to come down anyway. So this, this is a clearing job, so it's all getting cut. So Skitter's going to pull this out of there and create a little bit of a mess um, and you know this kind of stuff happens but I try to do a little better job than this usually like the one place that I could have gotten it hung up I got it <laughs> I could have dropped it anywhere else it would have been fine but I just send it right into the crotch of the thing and so now you can imagine what's going to happen in a wet swampy area you get a tree hung up in another tree and you get to pull it out and what do you know but you stop it. Yeah, see I'm telling him stop, don't do it, it's gonna fall over, but 
whatever. They were just going to pull it over. The, the guy was like, oh, it's fine. Just go with it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. It upwards and comes down. Kaboom. Two for one, I guess you can say. Uh, now, this is on another job. that I made some videos from this job earlier. Uh, the first couple videos on my channel actually are off this job. Uh, but this is the last day here cutting. It was a few days ago. And this is a pretty decent sized double trunk poplar. I was kind of worried. You can see it's got that seam down the middle of the trunk. I was a little worried cutting it that you might have an issue with it splitting, you know, when I, as I was cutting the tree. Um, so I'm going to do my bore in notch, what you, which, or, you know, my bore in back cut, which you guys have seen uh, a lot of. If you've watched any of, you know, this video or any other videos I made when you're cutting. And I'm going to come around and back. And this is a pretty decent size. Not that this tree was 40 inch. I mean, now again, it's two, you know, it's two tree trunk and one dump trunk. But I bet it on the stump it's 40 inches, maybe 35, 40 inches. This is a pretty decent size tree. And the excavator's there. He's gonna push it for me, so I don't have to wedge anything. So that's great because I'm kind of lazy. I really don't like banging wedges. It's you know always kind of feel it the next day. It's kind of, oh, I don't know. Real loggers, people that do this every day all the time. Build up the muscles and don't feel it as much. But for me, if I bang wedges all day, I'd definitely feel it the next day. And it would help too if I had a heavier ball or But anyway, you can see I'm coming around the back here and I'm going to let that part of the, you know, if you want to call this the right side of the double truck, I'm going to let that hold some on this back side. And then I'm going to go around to the left side and bore in and set my hinge and then come back and meet up with this cut. And like I said earlier, just the reason I do that is to try to avoid barber chairing. Um, but in this situation, I was trying to let the left side hold so that, uh, you know, I wouldn't have that completely cut off there and would hopefully reduce the risk of uh, the tree splitting out, you know, potentially before I wanted to. I mean, if it splits out while it's falling down, that's fine. But if it split out while I was cutting it, that'd be a serious problem. But one nice thing about board cutting, like what I'm doing now, is I can see as I'm, you know, I can see that saw that's coming out as I'm boring in there. If that tree was, you know, hollow, I'd be able to feel it. If it was rotten, I'd be able to see it in the saw that's in the um, for the saw. So it's solid, it's not hollow or rotten. I'm feeling that, and that's definitely giving me a lot of confidence as I'm cutting this tree, just to know that it's not, you know, there's no chance of it, or very little chance of it splitting in half while I'm cutting it there. Um, and I think I'm going to do a push on this one. This tree's pretty neutral, actually. I mean, it does have some, a little bit of forward game, but I guess it wasn't enough for it to go down, so I'm pretty sure I have to get him to come push it off the stump for me. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a pretty good size. Good size double trunk, get much bigger than that, and it probably wouldn't, uh, probably wouldn't hold up structurally for too long. This was actually, this job is, like, all poplar, a lot of poplar, and all really healthy, too. Some big healthy poplars on this job. Uh, which is cool. Cutting poplars is fun. It always makes you feel like you're, uh, you're good at what you're doing <laughs> when you're cutting poplar because they're, you know, if they're big and fat and tall and they, you know, cut so easy, you can just you know, you zip through them. You feel like you're a real tender cutter. But there it is. She's dead. So that went off without a hitch. And uh, these here, just me cutting a few. Not miscellaneous, but just a couple of these little pecker poles or whatever you want to call them. And nothing, nothing exciting. Some little hickories and red oaks. The end of the shit. It's too bad I lost, uh, or not lost. I uh, my camera died like fairly soon after this, and it's disappointing because I had some really good trees that I cut at the end of this job. Some big trees that were leaning back over. The, uh, the LED that he got that he had pushed back on, you know, back inside. And we was and he was actually like the machine was going downhill, you know, he was downhill pushing uphill against big trees that were leaning downhill. If that makes sense. So it was kind of some hairy cutting situations that we were in. And uh, I wish I had him on video, but I don't. Oh well. Um, but these little guys are nothing. We'll lay them out. Kind of the, the way this works um, 
is I'll cut, you know, five, six, seven trees. And then uh, we cut logs out of most of them. Like I'll, I'll cut a 16 foot log, or 16 six log out of, uh, well, not 16 six, 17 foot log out of, uh, out of the majority of, uh, <laughs> of these trees, or these, you know, these logs. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. I'll cut a, you know, a 17 foot or so log out of the majority of these to make them easier to deal with up on the landing. Because on this job site, the landing was really tight and cramped. So, just taking that one, you know, even just taking that one first length out of the, the log helped a lot with the uh, space management up there and just being able to stack things and stuff. Uh, and for the, even, you know, they, they have a processor up on the landing just processing all this. But, you know, still, there wasn't a whole lot of room to get chop stuff up there. So, that's what you'll see us doing here. I'll drop six or seven. We'll take the logs out, you know, cut the logs out of them. And then I'll top them. And uh, as I'm doing this, the excavator will kind of, he'll follow up behind me. And he'll stack the logs into skids and then stack the tops. And sometimes the tops will get skidded up for chipping material. Other times, they'll just get piled up and ground. But on this job, it was kind of a 50 50 deal. We were, we're doing some grinding right now, and there's been some chipping going on already, and all the chipping material we've already taken on for landing. So, a lot of the stuff down here right now, you can see I'm wrestling around with those stickers and bushes and whatever else. I'm complaining about that, and I think. Do I get stuck in this cut? Let's see. This one, yeah, you see that? That was dumb. I stayed in the cut too long. Should have just backed out. It would have been fine. But I was trying to get that far side over there cut off, and uh, ended up getting the saw pinch, as you saw. And I mean, that wasn't really dangerous because of the terrain I was in, but it definitely wasn't something I should have done. At the very least, if I was going to stay with the saw, I should have grabbed a pull cord and pulled it out and backed off. It's, you know. That stunt, that butt log, that tree could have come back and potentially, you know, knocked me over or something. So, I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. And here I am trying to cut a humble, um, which doesn't go very well, as you'll see. It's not something I do very often, it's something I can use a lot of practice with, but it's not something I do much. So, I'm trying to cut this humble, which, you know, I get it eventually here. I'm trying to think that somehow I managed to, <laughs> somehow managed to, uh, to get that notch in there, but I'm struggling real hard. This is the reverse of what I usually do, so it's, it's something I could definitely use practice with. And it's a good, I mean, it's something that's good to know. It's just the way that I cut, or the style that we cut, is generally not with the humble notch. Um, there's definitely times when you can use it that are, you know, that I should know how to use one. And, you know, on a little tree like this, I mean, shoot, what's this? Barely 20 inches? Like, I should be able to whack, whack a humble out of this, no problem, but I had to fight with it a little bit, but I got her done. And it comes off clean, it's not, you know, it, it does what I need to do. I don't, I think he might push this one too. The guy, the guy in the excavator is pretty good about following up behind me and pushing stuff over and we work pretty well together. He's been doing this a long time, um, so he's pretty well, uh, Pretty well versed in how things go and pretty safe and you know just good guy to work with real calm and not, you know, not getting fired up and yelling and screaming or anything so um, all the guys at this company are nice you know they're good people to work with so this is a company i work for in maryland this, these are not the guys that i was working with first and this maple here i think is going to be the last one of this uh this video, I'm gonna lay that down. It's kind of a, I mean, this is one thing when you're doing, you know, cutting on a clearing job. It's already been this job isn't cut with a buncher, like like I said, I cut you know, cut behind a mechanical crew, so it's the same kind of situation I used to do. You know? But this job isn't cut with a buncher, so all these trees are laid down all over the place, and you know it can make an awkward situation for me coming in trying to you know work around what they've already done. Um, not that they've done anything on purpose to make my life difficult, but you know, you just get into spots like this, which isn't that bad. I mean, I can reach this tree, no problem, with you know, not being able to get to that side. It didn't really make a huge difference for me at all. Um, but, you know, you definitely get into situations to clear your job where it's just like, 
ruts and mud and sticks and branches and logs all over the place and it seems like everything you do you're just pounding your head against the wall trying to get access to stuff you know you spend five minutes cutting the top out of the way just so you can get into a tree and drop it so uh yeah but this one will be you know it's maple it's gravy and it's a salt tree it'll cut without any issue in there so he's going to push that stuff out of the way for me because he's He's a good man, he's a good operator, he's a nice guy, he knows he's done my job plenty, so <laughs> he's uh, nice enough to reach in there and give me a hand, but I don't you know, really expect him to do that all the time, I'm not like the, hey, what are you doing, unless I really need it, I won't, you know, won't you know, get on him to help me. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, narration, and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks a lot, have a good one.